white, white people, any white people. White people, do you not have friends? This is the conversation. We're talking about skin, skin, look, once you're on top. Sam's class, 700 of us, one room. Half of all revenues for cosmetic products in the world come from skin whitening cream. Slam dunk, white people. Slam dunk, we win. It's funny, it's challenging, gets uncomfortable. So you're gonna go to a sperm bank. You say, we got a guy for you, his name's Kiwan. Rock on, here's his sperm. Are you cool with having his sperm? Yeah. <laughs> we talk about things that we never talk about, don't wanna talk about, but we need to talk about. I want you to pick out the darkest skin person. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Black, white, brown. Politics. Poverty. Gender roles. Culture. Religion. Love. Society. Sexuality. Everything. And there was like this. <gasps> Took the over class. the room. What was that? There was an oh. Because we, 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 we pretend not to notice, and he's telling us to no, like notice it. After class, Laurie makes it personal. Our lives. Our experience. What we think. What do we think about that? I, I have to admit, like I felt less attractive in this culture. To me. To see other Asian people is not American. Sometimes we all agree on things. A lot of times we don't agree on anything. And who did you envision? I envisioned the white man. A black person would display the same bias. Being pissed about it, like, I don't think that gets us anywhere. We can't get to problems unless we see them. And we can't change until we face ourselves. What can't you say? When I bring up white supremacy, the class reaction is always, ooh, are we really going to talk about white supremacy? But I'm not talking about the KKK, white supremacist hate groups, and I'm not blaming white people. White supremacy is a system in which light-skinned people and white culture are the standards we use to judge everyone. I need my three Korean volunteers, my guys. And I need a woman from Korea. Yo, can you come down? And I need a white woman who like knows nothing about Asians at all. Are we good? Is that you? Or is it you? Could it be you? It could be. Yeah. Do you do you like? Have you ever dated an Asian person? No. You haven't. Hang on. You've never dated an Asian person. No, I haven't. You have friends who are Asian. Yeah. You like close friends? N no. <laughs> do you have friends who are Asian? <laughs> be honest. You ever dated an Asian person? No. Uh, can I use you? All right, you ready? Okay, and you're gonna go in the back room. All right, here, come this way. You're gonna come in the back room too. So just hang out. Don't listen to what we're talking about. Okay, so here's the deal. All right, so what's gonna happen here is, I wanna look at beauty. And I wanna understand like how we think about beauty Remember, how does white supremacy operate? Because it's about whiteness. So you go to Asia, for example, where are beauty products? You know, white skin whitening cream, nose jobs, eye jobs. So what I want to do is I'm going to get the white woman to come out here and pick out which one is most handsome. All right? I'm going to get them both to do that. Dude, don't, dude, don't, you can't flex your muscles, dude. No, 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 don't. You got to be, you just stand. Yeah, okay. Okay, you first. Okay, don't listen to what's going on. Okay, you can hold that. You gotta talk right into it. Okay, okay so you ready? Come over here. Okay. Stand right here. Okay, so I want look at these three guys. Stand stand out a little bit. I want you to pick out which one is most handsome. Most attractive. And as you're doing it, I want you to talk through what you're thinking. <laughs> like what are you looking for? Because look, because if I chose like Hang on, can I, I need a handsome white guy, dude. No, not you, dude, sorry. <laughs> like, give me like, not you either, dude. Who's like a real handsome white guy? Come on, besides me. I mean, you know, I could use me, but I'm, um, you know, whatever, sorry. <laughs> okay, if, you pick, if we pick out a, a three white guys, you know what you're looking for, okay? You know like how to size them up and look at them. I want you to pick out, so how do you, how do you size up? Who's handsome right here? Talking to the mic, Go, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Because they they're ready for you. They won't take it personally. 
Okay. Um. No, look at them real good. You gotta look at them. <laughs> you might have to touch them. I mean, you know, kind of size them, feel whatever. Like. Um, Do you have a boyfriend, by the way? No, I don't. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> um. What are you looking at? What are you looking for? I'm like not that attracted to Asian men. Um. <laughs> this is good. And why? I love that look. Did, did you get that look on her face right there? I love that look. You don't know why, do you? I have no idea. Exactly. No. But we know why, right? But we think about it. You know why. Because why would you? Because you never see any Asian. You don't even know what to look at. You have no idea what to look for. What would you look for? Do you know what you would look for? Do you have any idea what you would look for? See, this is the point. This is like white supremacy. Like, why would you know? Look, it's not bad. Look, don't think like it's like terrible. White people were the oppressors. We like hold people down. No, no, no. It's a system of understanding the world through a white lens. Beauty, right? Like you, she's growing up. It's like, of course, she's not going to look at Asian guys. She's gonna, no, she's, it's a, the whole system is based on one way of seeing the world. So here, watch this, right? Okay, here, you can, here, can, you can stand right here. So pick out the one of the, they're all Korean. He's half Korean, but that's okay. She's from Korea, by the way, came here in the fall. So you're like, she's an authentic Korean. Unlike, <laughs> unlike, unlike this guy right here. But these two guys are authentic too, because you're, bo you're both born in Korea, right? No. You weren't? But you are. <laughs> but he was. Okay. So I want you to pick out the one that's most handsome. Talk into the mic. Tell us what you're thinking. <laughs> Go ahead. So hold the mic up to your mouth. Um, what are you thinking? I kind of think all of them are handsome. I don't know. Well, one of them you must think. You think they're all handsome? They have, like, good features on them. I... What are you looking for? When you look, at, when you look in their faces, right? Look at this guy right here, here, here. <laughs> what are you looking for? You know what you're looking for, right? Like, you have an idea that's yeah. different. Yes. Than if like it was me, like a white guy. Like I look different. But you know, like with these guys, you know what you're looking for. Yes. What are you looking for? I'm looking for um, a guy who looks when he smiles. Who, who looks what? A guy who looks good when he smiles. Looks good when he smiles? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> it was that simple. You know I'm, I'm honest. That's all, all, all you have to do, which would be this guy. No, this guy right here. So, but you have a sense of what to look for, right? Look, this is, this is the idea of the supremacy. Look, again, I want to emphasize, it's not like it's so bad. Okay, but all right, thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks, gentlemen. For me, by the way, if I'm choosing, <laughs> I, I think you're, you're all handsome, man. Totally. I think they're all handsome. Thanks. So what about the idea, though, when the woman who was chosen said, um, I'm not attracted to Asians, just when she got to that point, and she didn't actually ever tell us what she was thinking? What, what did you think of that? What, what was she saying? I was like, ooh. What, was that, what does that mean? It was just like, oh, my gosh, she like actually said that she's not attracted to a certain race, and we all, like, I have my preferences on what races I'm attracted to, but saying that out loud and in front of the people itself, you know? That left me kind of wanting to know more. I felt like she wasn't being as honest <laughs> as she could have. Like, that was the generic answer. It seems to me. So, Anna, like, you said, go ahead. Any person could have just said some random generic answer, like, I like nice hair or I like height. But she was just honest and, like, put it out there that she just doesn't find the whole entire race attractive. So, Anna mentioned this thing about preferences. Is it possible to have a preference? I mean, we've been talking about white supremacy. My parents can tell me all they want to marry an Asian girl, but, like, I grew up. In, a, in an all-white town, you know, with a bunch of country rednecks, and uh, I wasn't exposed to, to the Asian population growing up, and they can tell me all they want that to marry an Asian girl, but I'm always going to look at, I'm, I'm looking for an American girl. And is that white supremacy? In my situation, I mean, it, it could be, because it's, it's what I grew up with, it's the people that I was around, and... Um, I feel more American than, than others, and to me, to see other Asian people is not American. Yeah, for me, like, I don't have blue eyes, but for some reason, blonde hair and blue eyes is, like, what I see as, like, beautiful sometimes, and I think it is definitely a product of growing up in a country where 
that is what's beautiful. Are we overstating this? This, this idea that all these uh, ideas about beauty are white supremacy? I think or we just accept that this is true? I think there's definitely a component to it that maybe it's not from outside and it's just within yourself. Like when you look in the mirror, maybe you want to be, maybe you're just attracted to someone who is like you. And maybe it's not white supremacy, maybe it's just, you know, I just like someone who looks like me. So how would you explain us being attracted to people that don't look like us? Uh, maybe that's, I guess, maybe that's just my, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just my bias. Maybe it's because I'm white. I think the reason that it got me thinking is at some point in time, all of us were considered beautiful in whatever region we were in. And the reason we're products of our ancestors is because there was beauty and attractiveness there. And so that's what made me think, like, why don't we view ourselves as beautiful in our own race if at one time that was what beauty was? Let me give you another one. So I need a, a I need a white guy and a and a and a black black dude. Here, dude. Can how about can I go with you? How about if I just go with you two right here, right? Can can you guys stand up? We just step out here real fast. So here, check this one out. This was pretty cool. So an, another one. So here, can, you can stand right here, and you stand right there. So here, we took we take here's some here's two other tester sizes. We take these two guys. And we, we make him, I need a white, is there a white guy that looks like him? Dude, any white, any white guy with like, you know, with a hat, headphones, a whole, urban white dudes? Are there any urban white dudes? Okay, we'll go with, you do, you're close enough. You have, yeah, you have headphones. All right, you're good. <laughs> All right, so look, man, here's the deal. Dudes, we get you to look exactly alike, okay? We want you to be alike. We, we're going to get you to walk alike, talk alike. Everything about you, okay? Everything. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give you two different, so hang on one second. Hang on one second. We'll do the same thing. We're going to give you two resumes. And we're going to send you in to some job interviews, okay? And they're exactly alike. And when they meet people, do they meet me, the, the same person, right? The same employer. They're going to shake my hand in the same way. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Exactly. They're going to interact in the exact same way, and they're going to walk into the employers. Okay? Are we cool? But they're going to switch off. Sometimes he's going to have a felony drug conviction and have spent one and a half years in jail. Sometimes he's going to have a felony drug conviction and spend one and a half years and have spent one and a half years in jail. Okay, we're going to switch it off. And we're just going to see how people react to that. Okay, it's cool. Because we want to know, how are people really treating folks? And so, what do you think we find? What do you think we find? What do you think we find? Do you have any idea, bro, what, you, what we find? You don't get the job if you have the conviction. <laughs> yeah, we, the drug conviction. Yeah. Do you think race has anything to do with it? Um, they're probably more harsh on the black guy than the white guy. Probably more harsh on the black guy. What do you think? Uh, same thing he does. Yeah. Yeah. We, you think? Look here. Let me just say this. We live in a society where we believe in merit. Merit, right, bro? It's like, hey, man. Like, yeah, I got an equal chance. So these are tester studies. Apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Here's what we find out. 17% of the time, this guy with the felony drug conviction got a call back from the employer. 14% of the time, this guy with a squeaky clean record got a call back from the employer. 14%. People are more likely to hire this guy right here, the white guy, with a, with a felony drug conviction, one and a half years in prison, than they are to hire this guy right here with a squeaky clean record. They'd rather have him. Rather have him. I want to get your reactions to the, the one example of the white felons being more likely to re receive a callback than to the black people with a per person with a clean record. What, what were some thoughts, reactions? I, I got pissed. I, I was. I got pissed at the people who are making those jokes. And who did you envision? 
I just envisioned I just envisioned someone who was like a normal person who's hiring hiring people. I envisioned the white man when I thought about the person who was doing the hiring. I definitely got angry because I was just like, wow, like if that's reality, it kind of just shows how we're so we are so far in the past still. Like we say we made all this progress over time and we haven't. If things like that are still taking place, it's like I, I just immediately was just angry. So were you angry at him? Not okay. him specifically, because <laughs> I don't think that he would do something like that. But I was angry at people who are still in that mind frame who are white. And I don't feel like he is that person who would do that. But then again, he could be. And, I mean, to just like go against that, though, like, <laughs> I don't think most white people are like that. I don't think most, I think most employers are more responsible than that. They just still, like, they just have this this re they don't even realize it and they just well this person's better like I don't know why being pissed about it like I don't think that gets us anywhere what really struck me was that he, he said that that a black person or a person of color of any kind doing would, would display the same bias like they they would they would basically go through the same like filter almost it's like it might just be like let's say the owner of some apparel store is hiring someone and they live in a like a community that's mostly white, they might just hire a white person just because they think that, like, you know, like, sales associates are essentially, like, models for the store, and they might be like, okay, white people are going to come here and see another white person wearing this and want to resemble this. Like, I know I walk into certain places, and I'm like, they only hire white people, but I still hand my application in knowing that I'm They're probably not going to get a call back. Do you, for, I have, like, for you guys, do you feel that, like, Asians and, like, South Asians are viewed in that same way? Yeah. Any, I think any minority. Really? Because I would disagree with that. I don't think that I'm held to the same standard as, as black people. I think, like, I walk into an establishment of all white people, and I feel like I'm given, like, a fair opportunity a lot of times. And I don't know why that is. And maybe it's because of the stereotypes that come with both of us. Like, I know with African Americans it does, you do get, okay, loud, ghetto, uneducated. But with Asian, especially Asian individuals, like, they're viewed as being smart. Like, they're good viewed and good at math, engineering, good at anything, you know? <laughs> so they're, that's the, stere I think black people aren't usually given positive stereotypes. But, but what do you believe? Like, you're saying what you believe is, like, most white people don't want to discriminate, but they are anyway, because they're just basing it on certain standards. I don't think this is about labeling people as white supremacists. I think this is, like, exploring the concept of white supremacy. Like, right. I, I, like, I'm not a white supremacist, but, like, I bet you at some point in my life, like, I've done something that would be encompassed by white supremacy. So here's what I need. I need a white woman who is really, uh, has never spent the time around black and brown people. Is that you? Is that you? <laughs> no, you got to call someone out. Who is it? I need someone. It's not a big deal. Like, it's, trust me. It's like, it's cool. Is it, do we have somebody? Is that you? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Come on. Now here, we'll do it. We'll do it right here. You ready? So here's what I want you to do. I, I want you to pick out the darkest skin person <laughs> in the class. Okay? So you can hang on to that. You're going to need that. So look around, darkest skin. Dude, I'm seeing like, no, you can't volunteer. No volunteers. Dude, I'm seeing a few possibilities here. Go ahead, walk around. Are you feeling a little nervous? Yes. No, talk into that. You don't have to yes. feel nervous. It's OK. You know, dark skin people know who they are. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you see? Check out, check out the dude behind you, no? That dude right there. Uh, it's <laughs> it's I, always like the really dark-skinned dude that's like pointing to somebody else. <laughs> dude, yeah, you still looking at some, no, you dude in the orange, are you kidding me? <laughs> you're wearing a blue sweater and you're blending in with your sweater. Could it be him? It's either him or the girl over there. <laughs> Which one? I'm sorry. Yeah, all right, let's go with her. It's totally her. How you, how you feel about that? Embarrassed. You feel embarrassed? Yes. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's it's totally. Oh, come on, are you kidding? Here, come here. It's totally her. Here, let me ask you this question. Do, do, would you expect? 
Here, can I offer you yes. that? Would you have expected to get picked? Yes. Yeah, I knew. totally. You knew immediately yes. as soon as I asked the question? Yeah, as soon as you asked, because I knew it would be me. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, I got you. Here, so, so stand up a sec and let, it, let everyone see how, how dark you are. Right? <laughs> Go ahead. And you're feeling bad about that? Yes. No, you're not, she's not feeling bad. Are you feeling, no, really, what's your name? Jeanette. Jeanette. Yes. Cool, all right. So Jeanette, so for you, it just is, mm -hmm. right? So here's the deal. Now, let's talk about white supremacy for a moment. It's not, it's not about her picking out someone who's dark. Right. It's not about that, right? It's not about what white people think, actually, right? Here's the, de the depth of it. How many black people in here were secretly hoping that she would pick them? Anybody? Anybody secretly hoping they would pick them? Because there were a lot of black people in here who were hoping that she wouldn't pick you. There were a lot. And that's the depth of white supremacy. Why? Why? Because it's skin, right? It's skin. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. You're embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? Because it's wrong to look at someone and just notice their skin or judge people. Really? Because like that. that's what white people are taught. Yeah. <laughs> She notices it. She knows she's, she knows she's dark. She knows she's black. You know she's white, right? Does it, what do you think about it? Does it matter to you? Does it feel some kind of way? Like, I mean, talk it's right just into something the mic. That, I'm in, that I embrace, so obviously it's not really going to matter to me. Mm -hmm. You embrace it? Yeah. Cool. How about other people? Do other people embrace it? Like other people around you? Like your family? Well, you're African, right? I can tell that you're from, your family's from Africa. Yes. Where are you from? Ghana. From, from Ghana? Okay. <laughs> So, like, lots of people in your family are really dark. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And so, for you, it's not such a big deal. No. Yeah, yeah. But for other people. Yeah, I've heard comments, I mean, throughout my life, but I get over it, so. Yeah, you get over it? Yes. Yeah, so here's the deal. Cool. Thanks, man. Have a seat. Yo, thanks. Here's, here's what I want to kick out. You can have a seat. Thanks, man. So, here. Dark-skinned people. Any discomfort with that little exercise right there? Let me tell you, here's the reason for the exercise. Any discomfort with that is white supremacy. The, you know, the first moment when Sam said, pick out the person with the darkest skin, and there was like this. <gasps> Took over the room. What was that? There was an, oh. What, what, we, yeah, what was that? Pretend, Somebody put words to that. We pretend not to notice, and he's telling us to, no, like, notice it. Like, right. call it out while it's, like, something we think internally or something we'll talk to a friend, like, oh, like, he's so dark or, like, she's so pale. But, like, the reaction coming from dark, like, people would have been, like, really? Like, is he really going to put us on the spot like that? Or like, do we really have me. to be reminded of? <laughs> that was me. Yeah. I was just kind of like, oh, wow. And then I just kind of looked at my skin and was like, well, I know he, they're not about to pick me. <laughs> so I kind of found comfort in that. But, um, but see, we felt like we found comfort. Exactly. In knowing and that knowing we weren't going we to get picked. But if she had picked me out of 700 people and were like, you are the one with the darkest skin, I wouldn't have felt good about it. There's absolutely a sense of like, fair is beautiful and I am very conscious of it. I think that the reaction that that question elicited from the class showed that there's something there that about that dark skin that people didn't want to touch on and people felt uncomfortable pointing out and I don't know so that that made me pretty uncomfortable. And what did you think that was? What uh, it, What is that something? That something is that dark skin is bad. I mean, I'm curious about whether the inverse happened, if everyone would have the same reaction. If you have to find like the blondest girl in the room or the palest girl, whether that would seem like have like a shock factor to it. I don't, I, I'm thinking if I was asked, I would have felt much more uncomfortable um, finding the darkest person. I don't think it's the same. I think it's true because I think that people that have very dark skin are made to feel self-conscious about it. Um, my mom looks like she could be half white. And my sister, like they, they both have, they both have light brown hair, light brown eyes. Growing up, my mom like would talk to me about being lighter and and how when she was younger she was favored because she was lighter, and then like within her siblings there was resentment because her two other sisters are very dark. See, I can I can relate to how your mom felt because my mom is very light skin and my brother and sister are very light skin and my dad has darker skin and I took after my dad, and from. From the time my sister was born, so I was five years old, I didn't realize it, but I had resentment within me that she was light. It's just crazy to me how 
white supremacy goes so deep, is so deeply rooted in every single, every single race. Um, where, does this, where does this leave us? I'm just gonna be honest and say that I don't foresee this changing anytime in the near future. Like, I don't want like kinky hair to become the new fashion because that's inconvenient for me. I'll have to change my hair. What's not convenient for a lot of people is to take the time and sit down with somebody and learn who that person is. To just sit down and get to know somebody. How would you think? I think we should be optimistic, but I think it has to start somewhere within. You know what? In any situation, I'm gonna be open to other races. I think there is something to be hopeful because I think as awareness sets in of like, look, it's just a skin color, you know? I think people change their mindset. White supremacy is a term that stings white people and people of color, so no one wants to touch it. But once we do, we see how deeply it reaches into all of us. This is not about pointing fingers at white people. It's really about unmasking a system that teaches white people, black people, and brown people to make choices based on a white standard. So once we open up the conversation and get past the awkwardness, each of us learns that we can remove these distorted lenses we inherited and see the world more clearly. At that point, we actually have the opportunity to make a choice. Do we see and act differently, or do we just walk away? It's really that simple.